What's up, everyone? Jacob Roach back here from Mixing with Metal, and today I'm back on part four of our drum mixing series. We're going to talk about the snare drum today. Uh, I also have the giveaway winners picked out. Sorry, I have to turn my phone off here. Man, there we go. Uh, I also have the giveaway winners picked out, so make sure you stay tuned till the end of the video to see if you won. So, uh, my approach to snare is a little interesting. So, as you can see here, for my snare, I have four tracks, okay? And these are all the exact same snare track. Um, I, er, yeah, these are all the exact same snare track. I think I did record a bottom mic in this, but I opted not to use it because there was a lot of bleed and stuff. So if I play through these, these are all the same. I take that back. There is an actual bottom snare mic. So these two are the same. These, I mean, these two are different, and then these bottom two are the same as the top one. So I'll show you that. So three copies and then a snare bottom mic. Okay, and what I'm doing is I'm splitting up my, my processing of uh, the snare for what I'm going to use with samples, what I'm not going to use with samples, all that kind of stuff. So uh, let me show you where we're at in the context of the entire mix. Again, we have... Our overheads, our drum bus, and our kick all mixed already. And now we're going to move on to our snare. So the snare, I mean, it sounds good. It has a lot of pop to it and stuff, but there is a lot missing from it, right, to, to really kind of sell it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my, my live real mic. So... Uh, this is this is the the snare we actually recorded, and the first thing I'm going to do is use Pro MB. Okay, this is a trick I learned from Nolly in one of his mixing courses, and what it is is kind of it acts like a gate. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I have a pretty low dip here, and I'm telling the compressor I, I'm using it as a multiband expander, not a compressor. So what's happening is it's cutting out frequency, all this top frequency when something in this area isn't playing. So whenever a snare hit happens, which this happens to be, there, there's a lot of information here from like 3 to 2K. Um, whenever information comes up there, this will open up and allow that top end to come through. So instead of gating the whole signal, I'm just gating the top end, which gets rid of cymbal bleed, if that makes sense. Here, let me show you. It'll, it'll probably make more sense once you can see it visually. So this without it. So it's getting rid of that that top end bleed without making the snare sound super unnatural. Awesome tip. Uh, and if you're using live snares, you just you need to do it. Next, I have virtual mix rack. Not a whole lot going on here besides a little bit of drive from the Neve preamp. And actually, they just released their their new preamps. Slate did not too long ago. I'd be curious to try it out on this mix and see how that sounds. But here, here's without it, and I'll bring it in. Super subtle, just bringing, uh, opening it up just a little bit. Next, uh, one of my favorite EQs for snare drums in general because of this top band. This top band sounds amazing. Uh, you can really boost top end without it getting super harsh. And if you use that in conjunction with Pro MB, you know, if you're already cutting out that cymbal bleed, uh, it, it just sounds really nice. So again, I'll, I'll bypass this, bring it in, and then show you what I'm doing on the individual bands. And that's why I love this EQ is because like I'm doing 12 dB up here and I, I you can't I can't really super like it doesn't seem super harsh or anything. So anyway, uh, and it's not visual, which is always nice because you just EQ with your ears, which you should. Um, so what do I have going on here? I think I'm at I'm all the way down at respond. There we go. Uh, I guess I'm at having a shelf at 3.8 all the way up. I don't really, I mean, you don't really know where anything is here. You just kind of guess, but the lowest range is 3.8. So I guess a high shelf from 3.8 up, 12 dB, boosting that top band. Really all I'm looking for is the crack of the snare. And so wherever the crack of the snare is, that's where I'm going to start boosting that top. 
Next, probably around uh, 500 or something. I'm cutting out just a little bit of mids. Um, somewhere in the mid range, what I, I just boost and then sweep, you know, do that thing and try and find it. So like, if here, I'll do that right now. And get rid of that and just a little bit because if you start going crazy cutting out resonances this is really big for eqing snares if you go crazy and start cutting out every resonance it's going to sound really weird so don't do that uh next i have a bunch of top end boosted um same thing boosted to 12 and then Give me a little bit more uh, body in the low end there. But that's not going to be my final snare sound anyway. I'm going to use something else to kind of round that out. Uh, next, I have the 4030 Retro Compressor. Amazing compressor from McDSP. Um, and what I have here is slow attack, fast release, 4 to 1 ratio. And then I'm probably getting 6, I'd imagine. Uh, 6 dB or so gain reduction. So let's bypass that and bring it in. And let me show you, now that we're compressing, what this difference, this Pro MB makes. Makes a huge, huge difference. Um, so yeah, this sounds good. Just you're really slamming it in the compressor, trying to get six or more dB of uh, compression. Really trying to make it pop. Um, I did just download the FG Stress from Slate. So hang on, let me let me actually try that out really quick on here just in in real time to see if that sounds any good on the snare i mean I'm, I'm sure it does sound good but you know just show you what how i go to compress something Cool. So we'll rock with that. And it, it, <clears throat> if you didn't know what I was doing there, I just drove the input super hard so I could hear an exaggerated version of what the compressor was doing. Then I messed with my attack and release, my ratio, game matched the output, and then brought the input down so that it was more reasonable, play with the mix knob. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's typically how I go with compressor. Drive the input super hard so that you can hear what the compressor's doing, mess with your attack and release, then back it off. Or don't. You don't have to back it off. Sometimes it sounds good, super compressed. All right. Uh, Pro Q2. I think I probably heard something here. Yeah, resonance. But again, still important. I got to the very end of my chain, or almost the end. There's something else, but almost the end of my chain before I did this EQ move. Why that's so important is I want to get a finished picture, and if at the very end there's still something that's bothering me, then I'll notch it out. In this case, it was at 350 or so. But, like, it's not a big, you know, I'm not notching, right? I'm not notching like that. I'm doing a smooth bell, and I'm just pulling about 3 dB down, okay? And, again, that's going to give you a more natural result. Same thing with the overheads. If you haven't watched the overheads video, go back and watch it. Lots of stuff in there about EQing and EQing it. The, the symbols to sound natural same thing applies here with snare so after that uh we have a virtual tape machine slate virtual tape machine and this this can sometimes cut down the really poppy transient since you're slamming it into a distressor um and so let me show you what that sounds like on and off That really pokey part of the transient, it's just cutting that off, but still maintaining pop. So I put that at the end of my snare. Um, after that, snare reverb. 
Nice room sound. Uh, let's see what I'm using here. Verbiage. Verbiage, not verbiage. Uh, there's verbiage. I use, I sometimes use uh, verse, verb suite classics, and then I sometimes use <clears throat> uh, quantum leap spaces. Um, so, like, let me dial in a, a quick. What I do here in like quantum leap spaces, and I go into here, it's been specific. Uh, rock drums, guitar, big drum room. Let's see, let's do 1.5. You don't want a super, super long reverb. Cool. So you could do that, you know, whatever, whatever works, whatever reverb you have works. The, the important thing is with a snare reverb is to, uh, number one, make it on its own bus. Don't put it on the actual track. Um, just splitting it up like that typically ends up better. Uh, not that you can't put it on the actual track and that it'll all go bad. You can, but what I prefer to do is have my reverb separate so that I can blend it in underneath my unaffected snare sound. So I'm sending a copy of it to here as opposed to sending my full snare. So I'm not neutering it. Um, and then after that, I'm looking for something that is a room sound with not that much decay. Uh, don't go for super long decays, especially on metal stuff. You're, you're hitting drums so quickly and that decay is just going to start com compounding on itself and it's going to get really washy. Uh, setting a little bit of pre-delay to the point where you can't hear uh like a flammed transient but you can hear uh there is separation so generally in the the realm of seven to ten or eleven milliseconds is good once you get past maybe 12 milliseconds is when you start hearing that flam sound i think the human ear is like 12 or something is where we can hear the difference you want to give it space so that's not washing out your initial hit but at the same time you don't really want to hear that it's a separate hit and then i'm just rolling off low end because there's no reason to build up low end so there's that. I'm going to still rock with verbiage, but, or verbiage, excuse me. Um, but it's, you could use either. Any, any reverb works as long as you use those principles. So that's our live snare. So we already got a lot. You know, we've already gotten really far with a live snare sound, but of course we want to beef it up. And of course, these are the, the drums that we used in the first mixing with metal sample pack. Uh, so you should have getting, you should be able to get that snare sound. No problem with the samples that are already available. Um, next, we move on to the snare bottom mic. Also including the pack, we have again, Pro MB, just a copy. All right, once again, it's triggering off of this area. So I set it up to trigger off of, this is the side chain. So the expander is triggering off this frequency range to open up this. Hope that makes sense. Same thing though. Uh, virtual mix rack, same. I copied this over. Electra. Same, it's, it's still Electra, but different EQ principles. So I'm actually cutting a lot. Um, I have a little bit of a dip of a shelf, cutting a lot in the mid range, and then cutting some lows. Let me show you what that's doing. What my goal, <clears throat> excuse me. What my goal is, is to focus the uh, snare bottom mic into just that, that snare rattle. So I'm cutting, uh, I'm having a, a shelf where I, I cut a high shelf that's cutting. And then I have, uh, probably 60 B or so around 500 and then maybe three DB or so around, um, I don't know, maybe 
maybe this is at 300. I'm not 100% sure. Again, this is just a good EQ, so you just listen because you don't know where anything's at, and that's okay. And so it's focusing it, and you can hear that. Cool, perfect. Let me check. All right, I just wanted to make sure because we're this is going to be a long video, and so I want to make sure that we're still, still uh, recording here. Next, I have the compressor again. Uh, this is a similar idea, but I have the attack completely slow and the release completely fast. So then I just copied the same slate one that I used over. Works fine. Dude, anything to make your 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 life more easy, go for it. Um <clears throat> I don't really think like if you copy over a compressor setting, that's fine. Who care like it's not a big deal if you just copy it over from your other track, especially if they're both snares. Same thing with the the virtual tape machines. And now I do have the snare verb set uh bus set up, but I don't let me see what it sounds like to send it. Yeah, I'd rather not send it. So I'm, and that's that's this is another great reason. I'm just not gonna send my snare bottom to my reverb. Okay, so now we got that all set up. Let me check phase really quick. Um, I'm sure there's phase. Yep, here we go. Let me check phase really quick. It is out of phase. So yeah, definitely. That's all. That's, that's the extent of my phase checking. Some people use auto align. That's fine. If you, you need to get yourself super in phase. Great. Go for it. That's fine for me. All right. So now this is my live snare, right? This is my live snare and that's, that's, that's it. But I want to make it even better. Uh, so I've talked about this before, but using a snare room, and that's what we're going to do here. Open it up. I have, I think this is from Get Good Drums, this room. And then I have this room. I don't. Yeah, I'm not using it, though. So let's use that. Um, just loading up a monitor stereo version of trigger and then loading a room sample in there. Uh, again, in our sample pack, the the there are stereo rooms that you could use as well. You should just combine and experiment. Next, I have um, my preset for huge snare room, what it is, and um, using the FG or the custom series lift here, which boosts a bunch of top end. This top end band sounds really good if you just need tons and tons of top. Uh, and then I'm using the Blue Edition 1176, but again, in honor of this new plugin, I want to try out this so let's do that on the spot Cool, and there you go. And I like the sound of this FG stress a whole lot better. So yeah, that's now the the snare uh, snare room chain, and that's it in the snare room. Not sending it to the the drum parallel drum compression or the verb. Uh, the snare room sits on its own. So all together, these three. Cool. So there's our snare room sound. And I'd have to blend that in more just because this did a huge volume boost um, coming out of it. So uh, lastly, la lastly, I can use words. 
lastly, we have our snare sample. So we we have gotten all the way here. So this this is I lay samples at the very end of it. So I try and get everything I can up front, and if I'm still not getting there, then I lay samples. Oh, do not commit. So here's the samples that are going on. American Idiot snare. Uh, I think this is a Taylor Larson snare. Uh, which is amazing. Don't crash. Just let me... I'm trying to just get to the sample. Okay, there we go. Let me do my... Let me get to my samples here. Cool. And let me load up a snare sound. Again... It's a little bit weird because these are the same drums. I don't need a snare bottom. So let's see how that sounds. All right, so there we go. That's our finished snare sound. Oh, um, then I also, virtual tape machine, same thing copied over, and then I also send this to the snare verb generally. That snare sounds massive, and again, same thing. These are all super different samples, but you blend them together and you get something different. All right, and so let's hear all these together. I'm going to bypass all of my processing and then bring it all back in. Ooh, that's not the right amp sound. That is something I was playing around with. <laughs> Getting the best of both worlds. You have the aggressive and consistency, aggressiveness and the consistency of a sample while still being able to maintain ghost notes and rolls and stuff like that uh, because you're using the real snare track. So that is how I go about Mixing a snare, I know it's a very long video, but the process for snare is super important, and uh, that's how I go about doing mine. Next, we'll talk about the toms, and then we will talk about the rooms, and then we'll wrap up, and our drums will be all finished. Um, so let me get the contest winners up here. So the contest winners are Raven Mad 9 Tyler Safirit, and Lisa Garland. Uh you guys won the free pack of samples from the store. If you haven't, if you didn't win, I'm sorry. You can still go pick them up. They're only 15 bucks. So uh, 15 bucks gets you four, uh, four different drums with tons of different mic positions and all that kind of stuff. You can have her there, see everything that you get and hear them in action and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, you guys won. If you guys watch this video, oops, I'm on caps lock. Please email me here, jacob.roachge at gmail.com. Send me an email there, and I will make sure to get the sample sent out to you. Um, once again, guys, thank you so much for entering the contest. Thank you to the people who already have picked up the samples. Uh, if you have any questions about them, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions about this video, about mixing snare, let me know. I'd be happy to elaborate further on it. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, guys. I'll see you next time.